Listen, I just heard you guys are going to Bush Gardens this weekend. That's going to be so much fun. Just call me from your car if you get a chance. Just wanted to catch up with you. See ya. It was a Friday morning, and my husband Tim had been gone for a week to a conference in Las Vegas. He took the red eye flight home and got home Friday morning. We were loading the car, getting ready to go pick up our daughter from school to go to Bush Gardens for the weekend. All of a sudden, it felt like I had been shot in the head. Just a sudden pop of just excruciating pain in my head. And then a sudden stiffness in my neck and dizziness and sudden tingling in my feet. I could feel it all over. I knew it was an emergency. I needed him to call an ambulance to come. 911, what's your emergency? When someone comes in grabbing their head, saying it's the worst headache of their life, most physicians that ring the bell that this is an aneurysm, it's when it's more subtle. They may have felt dizzy. They may have had a, uh, a warning leak, maybe as subtle as uh, feeling a neck strain. And uh, when that is suspected, it has to be pursued by a physician to figure out if indeed they have had a hemorrhage. Frequently they'll think, well, this is a migraine or a cluster headache, especially if there's eye pain associated with it. Um, sometimes they'll refer to them as, oh, it's a sinusitis, give them antibiotics, send them on their way. And I've even seen one case where it was misdiagnosed as a cervical disc herniation because the patient had some neck and arm pain. They thought, oh, that's really your neck, it's not your head. Because emergency rooms see common things often, uh, headaches from ear infections, headaches from uh, gastroenteritis, from viral syndromes, uh, from uh, hypertensive emergencies, things like that. Those, are, those tend to be the very common types of misdiagnoses. There are a laundry list, actually, of, of misdiagnoses for this, both in terms of patients and physicians. They include um, sinusitis, the flu, uh, things as simple as that. Uh, drug intoxication can be confused with subarachnoid hemorrhage. Emergency room physicians see patients who are intoxicated all the time. In fact, they see regular offenders of drug intoxication. And you have to keep in mind that sometimes uh, it's not a drug intoxication. And if there's any asymmetry in their neurologic exam or something unusual that doesn't fit with the diagnosis of a drug intoxication, subarachnoid hemorrhage or intracranial hemorrhage, needs to be considered. So someone comes in with a headache, someone comes in and has a little redness in their eardrum uh, and has had a headache or some sort of atypical headache pattern and they'll be given that diagnosis. So otitis media, gastroenteritis, GI disturbances, dehydration, um, hypertensive emergencies, myocardial emergencies, those types of things are common uh, and therefore used a lot as diagnoses when in fact subarachnoid hemorrhages are woven uh, in those diagnoses or, or woven in those patients around those diagnoses in ERs. I think it's not keeping a high index of suspicion. For, as a physician, you see someone in the emergency room comes in and they have that history of a sudden explosive headache. People don't want to think, oh, this could be an aneurysm. So they're going to try to go with the more common entities. You know, oh, it's a sinus infection, it's a migraine, it's a cluster headache. I've even seen cases where they refer to, they have some associated neck pain, so they think it's a disc herniation and a problem with degenerative spine disease. And it's that lack of clinical suspicion. Even if you remotely think it's a possibility, you need to bring it up to the top of your list and do the appropriate workup. Because if it is a sentinel bleed and it's missed, the results can be catastrophic two or three weeks later. Those are the sad ones that we see because I, I will see cases and review cases quite often where patients will come in and they'll say, well, this is a hypertensive crisis, take your blood pressure medication, follow up with your doctor, and we'll go from there. Uh, a few days later, the patient comes in and has a fulminant hemorrhage. Uh, these are the types of things that we'd like to try to capture. And the, rate, the, the way that you do that is to just simply keep aneurysmal hemorrhage in the differential diagnosis. The Brain Aneurysm Foundation was a resource that we found to be so helpful. We found just being educated through their website and their resources was incredibly helpful. I would like to say thank you to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for their efforts to spread the importance of early detection to the medical professional community.
Without question, the Brain Aneurysm Foundation and efforts to raise awareness of brain aneurysm uh, diagnosis and treatment are uh, very important parts of lowering the, uh, the risk of stroke and the mortality associated with stroke. I'm just thankful that they're there and they're reaching out to families to be a resource as well as the medical community. And I'm thankful for the fact that they're getting out this message of early detection, early um, treatment, and helping the medical community understand uh, how to spot it and hopefully save lives. That's what this is all about. I really feel like I was one of the lucky few to make it to the hospital and for the doctors to diagnose early that it was a brain aneurysm. And I made it through because of that, but a lot of people don't. It's not diagnosed fast enough and they don't make it. So many people die from this that don't have to. Um, if they only were diagnosed correctly and early and got the treatment that they need, their outcomes are going to be so much better. And we're talking about real people here. These are moms and dads, grandmothers, grandparents, um, children of parents that can be saved. There are so many families that aren't as lucky as we were that the children don't have their mommies anymore to grow up with. And maybe if they would have just been diagnosed early, they'd still be here.